Well, greetings, imagination connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your Viceroy of Verisimilitude, your master of fun and wonder, your existential Mr. Rogers, Robert Meyer Burnett, coming at you after a long hiatus, the longest hiatus Rob Observations has ever been on. And I have to tell you, I've been to New York. I am now here in Portland, Oregon. And why, why am I here? Well, let me tell you why I'm here. I am here working with one of my oldest, dearest friends in the world, Dr. Michael D. Schertz, MD18 Delta. And we were working on his show, Crisis Medicine. And what is crisis medicine, you may ask? Well, you're going to find out all about it. But first, let me give you a taste. Here is a trailer for what we've been doing. I learned in Army Special Forces that all lessons are written in blood. I don't want you to have to relearn those lessons. My name is Mike Schertz. I'm a board certified practicing emergency medicine physician in one of the busiest emergency departments in Oregon. I also have over 10 years as an Army Special Forces medic, specifically as an 18 Delta. That's actually where I was first introduced to most of this material. Law enforcement's currently taught in active shooter or active violent events to assertively make contact with the primary bad actors and stop the killing. Now with this information, you can also stop the dying. The tactical casualty care class largely involves casualty management in what we call care under fire or direct threat environment. Anyone who spends any time around firearms professionally or personally needs that material. Eventually you're going to be around someone who gets shot. We know that law enforcement arrives at medical calls about four minutes before EMS. If you're a casualty at one of these events or simply there but uninjured, that first several minutes of care is going to have to be provided by you. Law enforcement is going to have their hands busy securing the scene and trying to keep everyone safe. One criticism I will make of my own material is that people have called it encyclopedic. It is, I agree with them. I want to teach you not just the what to do or the why to do it, but the how and more specifically, the how best to do it. Now with the information that you're learning, not only can law enforcement get in there to stop the killing, but now you have some ability to stop the dying. Now it wouldn't be a Rob Observation show, would it, if I didn't have a dog? And this is Aaliyah. And she's a German Shepherd. And she gets a treat just like Gilbert and Tallulah did. That is, of course, Mike's dog. And uh, it's great to be here to have a dog to, uh, to share with you. Now, I know a lot of you want to talk to me about the return of Han Solo. Not Han Solo in outer space, but the Han Solo. The one and only Han Solo. The Sun Kang Han Solo. There's going to be time to talk about that soon. But now, ladies and gentlemen, let me bring on our first guest, Dr. Michael Schertz, who I've known since elementary school. A man I've gone through, well, I really haven't gone to hell and back with him, but sometimes he might think I've put him through hell. But we used to copy videotapes together, and he, he loved the military since he was a kid. Now he's an emergency room doctor and a former Green Beret. little different fare than what I normally have here on Rob's Observations, but allow me to introduce the empresario behind crisis medicine, Dr. Michael Schertz. Give it up for Mike. A little golf clap, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, it's great to have you here on Rob Observations. You just have to look at the camera and Thank talk. You. So why don't you tell the folks at home what we've been doing? First of all, let's a, give us a little bit of your background. Sure. So I'm an emergency physician. I've done that for a little over 20 years uh, here in Portland. Where I work at one of the busiest hospitals here. Um, I've got 20 years of experience as an EMS medical director. Uh, prior to that, then I had 13 years Army Special Forces experience as a Special Forces medic. My training company, Crisis Medicine, teaches uh, the management of casualties in high-risk environments. So think active shooter environments, uh, Boston bombing, those kind of situations where it's not really typical day-to-day -day EMS first aid. So really cheerful events that you want to find yourself caught in. Yes, yes. Everyone's looking forward to, to being in one of those events. Now, what, what I thought was pretty cool about crisis medicine when you talked to me about it for the first time is that you're teaching, you don't have to be an EMT or a paramedic. You're Correct. teaching people from all walks of life how they can manage the care in the midst of a, an active violent event and they can save lives. 
Correct. What, we, uh, what we've recognized is from a standpoint, say, of uh, significant bleeding, a significant artery injury can actually cause someone to bleed out, to bleed to death in less than five minutes. And even with an immediate 911 call with one of these events, EMS is not going to be there within five minutes. It's really going to be more kind of the seven to eight or longer time frame. So if some of these casualties are going to survive these events, they're going to have to be treated by the individuals that are there when the event happened. And the federal government actually has a term for that. They call them active bystanders. So one of the classes that I teach, the class we captured uh, digitally this week that we're going to have online hopefully in a few weeks is called an essentials of casualty care class to teach everyday private citizens with zero medical background how to do these skills that have the potential to save a life in a wounded with a wounded casualty in one of these environments now what made you decide to do this like you're already an er doctor sure and you're the the, the father of a of a very um uh rambunctious teenage girl and you have a wife who rides roughshod all over you. So what did you need to teach this class for? You know, it's interesting. Uh, Army Special Forces, you know, the, the Green Berets are, are not generally portrayed accurately in the media. The primary job of Army Special Forces is to be military advisors. So my job as a Special Forces medic was, one, to provide care to all the members of my Special Forces team, um, but also if we're going to deploy to another country and we're going to train their military and interact with their population, I have to do quite a bit of teaching. So when I became an emergency physician, I still do the emergency medicine piece of that, uh, but I wasn't doing as much teaching, and I, I really like that aspect of it. One of the other things that I see is that a lot of the people that teach classes, um, well, they're just not that good at it. <laughs> so what I learned in the Army uh, under some, some fairly harsh tutel tutelage is if you can't affect learning in your students, then you're a pretty crappy teacher. Um, and I didn't realize till after I got out of the military that apparently I was fairly good at it. Um, now, how long did it take you to develop the curriculum? I mean, your class is, sure. as you said, your, your class is encyclopedic. Sure, sure. Uh, not the class we just uh, captured this week, but my full, complete casualty care class is, is very encyclopedic. It's hard to say. It's, it's kind of evolved over the last you know, 30 years. Um, so it's, when I put the slide deck together for the current class, it was about 200 hours. Uh, and a lot of that is because you have to research medical literature. Somebody does a study that shows one thing. Somebody does a study that disagreed with it. Now you got to find a tiebreaker study to make sure that the information you're putting out is, is accurate. I, I don't want it to be my opinion. I want it to have some, some basis in reality. So why don't you explain what was, the Im uh, what was your impetus to capture this course digitally so it could be online? Sure. I mean, there's lots of things like TED Talks. There's the master class. And right. we've sort of done sort of a fusion of that kind of thing. Yeah, we have. Um, quite honestly, I got tired of people that took the class telling me that I should make an online version so they could have other people see it. Um, and I do like teaching classes. I really enjoy teaching them live, but I also work full time and have other things to do. So I can't teach as many classes as perhaps people would want. Right. Uh, it's also challenging for people. It's challenging to get good instruction. Uh, you know, traveling to take a five day class turns out to be thousands of dollars. Whatever the tuition is, plus, you know, airlines, you have to eat out for five or six days, you have to rent a car. That's, that's very expensive for people. So if we can give people the same material online, they can watch it over the span of weeks, months, or however long they need to. Now, where, where uh, can people find this course? Because, and anybody can take it, right? Sure. Sure. All the courses that I teach uh, are all available for, for anyone's you know purchase online. My website is www.crisis-medicine.com. The dash is fairly important. Uh, and that's my site with all of the classes that I teach, all of which uh, Rob uh, directed and helped capture for us. And uh, the next th the classes that we just captured these last two days will be up on that website uh, as soon as we're done with this so I can crack the whip and getting back to editing. No, <laughs> yes, yes, I'm going to go back and edit for him. As soon as this As is soon done. as this broadcast is done. So I want to thank you and your wife for not, for unshackling me from the metal chair that you've, you've put me in for the last couple days and allow me to do this broadcast to prove 
to my subscribers that we are still here. But one, you know, one thing I wanted to ask you too, sort of in, in conclusion, you know, we live in a world where the kinds of active violent events, whether they're school shootings or what happened in Las Vegas, which you went into pretty extensively in this course, mm -hmm. as they become, uh, I mean, we're almost being inoculated against the horror of it all. Um, really, do you think that th this, this course ultimately is going to save enough lives? To use some military terminology, we're right of bang with this course. The bang happened, whether it's an explosive charge or a gunfire. We're on the, the right-hand side of that. We're dealing with the casualties. Um, there certainly are things culturally that we could do to make these events less frequently, um, but I'm only really dealing on cas with casualty management. The things we're teaching do have the potential to save some lives. One of the, one of the issues we've had is unlike we talked about some Vietnam combat data that we know very clearly what has killed uh, casualties in Vietnam and we know very well what has been killing servicemen from the global war on terror since 2001. We don't have similar databases on what injuries are actually killing people in these active violent incidents. From a medical standpoint, if I don't know what's killing people, then it's a little bit of anybody's best guess how to treat them. So we have some things are obvious, people are bleeding to death out of arms and legs, but how often that happens, we don't really know. So we need more data to drive care, uh, more, to drive care more scientifically. Right now, based on what we know, uh, these skills do have the ability to save a life. How often the casualties in some of these events are gonna need these skills, that's what we're still trying to figure out. Well, one of the things that I love about you in particular, not just because you're a great guy, but how many physicians, emergency care physicians, were also in the military? And the fact that you, you've done a fusion, you're bringing the, this incredibly large knowledge base, both from the medical profession and from the military, together into, a, a, I think, a new skill set? I think that's fair. Uh, a lot of what we're uh, teaching for this pre-hospital care is what's called tactical emergency casualty care, which... Uh, came from tactical combat casualty care, which is the DOD's guidelines on how to care for these casualties, all of which came out of looking at Vietnam combat casualties. And I actually learned, started learning uh, the database on what was killing casualties in Vietnam when I was in the Special Operations Medical Sergeants course in the late 80s. But it didn't really get a lot of press elsewhere in the military until 1996. So all of this casualty management in these high-risk environments really is drawing upon military data. So it is an interesting interface between emergency medicine, EMS, and military, uh, the military experience. And you're constantly evolving the course. Correct. Correct. Because every time there's a new event, we get new information. And one of the things that's scientifically interesting, but unfortunate, of course, with these events, is these events are all very different. Um, someone who goes into a classroom and shoots several adults is different than shooting several children, which is very different than blowing up 264 people in Boston or shooting over 500 in Las Vegas from 350 or 400 meters. These are very different events. And so we're having trouble getting data on what exactly is killing these people. So how can we intervene and save lives? Well, on, on that note, I just want to say that I think that the crisis medicine course uh, of all the things that I've been involved with, whether it's movies or television or promos or even doing YouTube, uh, uh, crisis medicine is one of the things that I'm most proud of, uh, of that I've ever done. And I want to thank you for involving me and continuing to involve me. And I know it's not our usual bill of fare here on Rob Observations, but I do think that crisis medicine is a very important thing to have. And I would, anybody that's interested in, in the material, I would suggest looking into it. There's a one-day course, a three-day course, and a very extensive five-day course. Where can people find that course? www.crisis-medicine.com. And the, the lengths of the courses that Rob uh, listed, those are the in-person courses. All of those in-person courses are available online. Uh, and then obviously they're quite a bit shorter by hours because you don't have to fly to Portland, Oregon to take a class. Well, listen, man, thanks for coming on the show. I know you Happy can't to. stand this. By the way, he, he wasn't going to do this. He hates this, even though he's the star of these, these lectures, which are amazing. I can't believe I got him on the show. So thank you. Good. Now I can leave. Thanks.